teach the youngest person in the room. That's what I found. If I went into a family and there was a father and mother and a seven-year-old girl, I wouldn't talk to the father and mother very much. I would talk to the seven-year-old girl. And that takes a little practice. That it's a little bit tricky because you can't use big words. But the awesome thing about that is that you're talking about the gospel, something none of these three people know very much about, but you're talking to the seven-year-old and it's forcing you to teach so simply. Meanwhile, the parents are listening and learning so much more because this is the language they need to learn the gospel in. But if you were to talk the same way to the seven-year-old girl as to the parents, they would feel like you were treating them poorly. Instead, you're talking to the seven-year-old and the parents are attentively listening and learning. It was one, th those experiences were some of the coolest and sweetest lessons. Uh, so that's why I say um, talk to the youngest person in the room. Now that might change if it's a three-year-old or an infant, but you get what I'm saying. So object lessons to me were really important when you had a seven-year-old or a nine-year-old or a 12-year-old. We did little gospel puzzles sometimes. We made them up with some cardboard and wrote different things like priesthood and things and said, you need every piece of the puzzle. Help us put the puzzle back together. And we would put it back together and talk about every name on the different puzzle pieces that we made. That one was fun.